السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهداه وبعد All praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all And to accept from us the prayer that we have just rendered And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who receive a complete reward for every letter that we have heard being pronounced from his word, the Qur'an. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who can be accepted in the dunya as well as in the akhirah. Ameen. Honored ulama, beloved brothers and sisters and dearest listeners, it is indeed a very, very fortunate moment from amongst the moments of this particular month of Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us every form of mercy. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who can take heed. For these are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This evening we have a very intense topic, a topic that is of utmost importance. As-salatu imadu din Faman aqamaha faqad aqamad deen, wa man hadamaha faqad hadamad deen. Salah is one of the main pillars or the main pillar that upholds and uplifts the deen. Whoever holds it up will hold their deen. Whoever has discarded it has destroyed their deen. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us firstly to read our salah, to fulfill our prayers, the five daily prayers that we are speaking about. The salah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us in many places in the Quran. Listen to what he says in Surah Al-Baqarah. وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَارْكَعُوا مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ Establish your salah and give your zakah and find yourselves bowing with those who are bowing. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us with what is known as jama'atul muslimin, with those who are the congregation of the muslimin. And we ask Allah to grant us steadfastness. That is the first point, the command of salah. This verse is repeated so many times in the Quran in many, many different places. Then we have the second issue that is discussed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is in no order or sequence, but we are making mention of the points. Allah makes mention of the fact that your salah must be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must not associate partners when it comes to salah. We never ever render any act of worship for anyone besides Allah. Allah says in Surah Al-Jinn, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا Definitely the places of prostration belong to Allah alone. So never ever call out or render any act of worship to anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah to grant us steadfastness. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-An'am, and we repeated this verse a few days back, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لا شريك له وبذلك أمرت وأنا أول المسلمين. Allah says, say, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, that my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, my death is all for the sake of Allah. No partner does He have, and I am from amongst the first who have surrendered. May Allah make us from those who have surrendered as well. Amin. The third issue discussed regarding salah in this Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises those who fulfill their salah properly. And Allah praises them from the very beginning in Surah Al-Baqarah. He says, He calls them Al-Muttaqun. He calls them those who are conscious of Him. Because in order to fulfill your salah, you need to have iman and belief in the unseen. No one would fulfill salah if they did not believe in the unseen. Allah says, this Quran is a means of guidance for those who are conscious of their Rabb. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Those who believe in the unseen and who establish their salah and spend from what Allah has granted them. Look at how Allah praises them.
He calls them the rightly guided. And there are many such verses. I am only, I am only putting forth one or two verses from every angle that the Quran has discussed the subject of salah. Because if we were to mention all the verses, we would be here all night. And then subhanallah, we would find tomorrow, everybody would be telling me, now we have more Abdul clocks that we spoke about yesterday. May Allah protect us. I think that term, everybody has memorized the term. Every time I see people, they tell me, look, I'm not from amongst those who worship the clock. Allah protect us all, inshallah. Then the next issue discussed by the Quran is the issue of the Qibla. Very important. We want to read our salah. Allah has praised those who read their salah. Now let's talk about where to face. Remember, we do not worship the black box known as the Kaaba. We don't worship it at all. The only thing we use it for is direction for Salah. And we hold it in, in a high esteem and in very high regard, Islamically and spiritually, because we all face that direction. And it is a house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we respect it, but we don't worship it. Some people spread a rumor, the non-Muslims, and they say, you see these Muslims, they worship idols. And they worship this... Uh, black, black box that they have left there in Makkah. No, we only use it for direction. So Allah says many times in the Quran, at least three times in Surah Al-Baqarah. So face your face in the direction of Al-Masjid Al-Haram. Hence, we are all facing that direction. Now, I'd like you to just think of a certain miracle that occurs every single day. When Adhan is called and all of us are standing for Salah, just picture the Kaaba in the center. There are safs that are made around the Kaaba. Correct? Yes, they are. Then the bigger circle in Makkah, everyone who's facing is facing the Kaaba. The bigger circle outside in the Middle East, whoever's facing is facing the Kaaba. The bigger circle on the globe, whoever is facing is facing the Kaaba. Subhanallah, everybody is facing that direction at once, praying for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes the timing is a little bit different here and there. But imagine those sufuf, if we did not have walls, and if we did not have distances, it would be miraculous to watch billions of people actually prostrate for the sake of Allah. Allahu Akbar, subhana rabbi al-a'la. All praise is due to Allah. We are fortunate to be from that ummah. Now this direction is there so that no problems are caused. Because what would happen is a rich man would say, no, let's build a place of prostration facing my house. The other man would say, no, my business has a big turnover. Let's face my business. The other one would say, no, I've got a very pretty wife. So let's build a, a masjid facing her house. May Allah protect us all. May Allah grant us happiness. In order to resolve the problem, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you will face this direction. That's it. Then because some people thought that that direction is what we worship, Allah clears that in Surah Al-Baqarah and He says, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ The verse is a long verse. Allah says, do not think for a moment that righteousness is in the direction you are facing. No. Righteousness is not in facing the, the east or the west. Righteousness is the one who believes in Allah, the one who believes in the messenger, who does good deeds, who establishes the salah. Which means it is more important to establish your salah than the direction. Though the direction is also important. What is of greater importance is the establishing of the salah. And this comes to play when a person is confused about the Qibla. The ruling of the Sharia says, just try and then you face. So if I've tried, for example, and I faced the wrong direction, but after a trial, my salah is accepted because the fulfillment of that salah is far greater than the direction you are meant to be facing. But if someone faces the wrong direction intentionally, then their salah will not be valid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Then the next issue, now we know where the Qibla is. What should I do? I need to purify myself, cleanse myself. The Quran tackles that angle also. Subhanallah. The Quran speaks about Tahara. And the Quran tells us in Surah Al-Ma'idah, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا قُمْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ فَاوْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقُ وَامْسَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ Allah is teaching us how to make wudu. O oh, you who believe, when you want to read salah, 
arrive at a level of purity and a level of cleanliness that will make you pure, pure enough to read salah, pure enough to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what should you do? Wash your faces, wash your hands up to the elbows, wipe your head and wash your feet. Allahu Akbar. Now, sometimes we all know that when a person breaks wind, he does not or she does not wash the place where that happened from, but he or she would make wudu. So sometimes people say that doesn't make sense. No, it does. It makes sense. It is a spiritual cleansing over and above a physical cleansing. It is a spiritual cleansing which keeps away the devil and shaitan, a person who remains in the condition of wudu 24-7 or tries to at least remain for as long as possible in the condition of wudu shall be protected even from the devil and shaitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then also clarifies the issue that you know some people might think we are clean, we are smart. Take a look at the non-Muslims. They might appear to be very smart and very prim and prop. Only Allah knows how clean they are. Because they don't know sometimes that they are unclean. May Allah protect us. But with us, we need to arrive at a certain level of purity and cleanliness. Everyone must wash their feet. No one can say, mine are quite clean. Because then who's going to be the judge? When there's someone smelly and stinky in the masjid, and all of us are being affected by the man standing next to us, then he might think he's clean. But Allah says, no, if everyone washes their feet and everyone washes their hands, then nobody will be unclean and nobody will disturb the others in salah. And this is why it is important. We should not come to the masjid with different smells which are offensive, like the smell of onion, the smell of garlic. The hadith says, wash your mouth properly before you come to the masjid. Even if you smoke, there might not be a hadith about smoking, but I think it's worse than garlic and it's worse than onion. May Allah protect us all. Then we have another issue regarding salah. What did I say moments ago? Make sure you are fit enough to come to the masjid. Allah speaks about tahara. Then Allah says, you must wear your best clothes when you want to read salah. When you want to fulfill salah, when you are coming to the masjid, wear clothes that are the best. Not in order to show off to people, but to show off to your creator, to say, Ya Allah, you gave me good clothing. I'm wearing this, mashallah, good abaya. And mashallah, I'm wearing such a, such a nice piece of clothing that will please my own creator. And this is why it is makruh for us to pitch up at the masjid with our pyjamas. May Allah protect us. Early morning we come and we are wearing something that we were sleeping with. It's makru. Your salah will be valid inshallah. But take pride in the houses of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-A'raf, Ya bani adama khudu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. O children of Adam. O children of Adam. Adorn yourselves with beautiful clothing when you are going to the places of worship, wherever you are going to put yourselves and meaning your heads down for prostration for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The term masjid refers to the place of sujood. So that place of sujood can either be a house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or it can be anywhere else that you are actually reading your salah. At the time of fulfilling your salah, dress properly with proper good clothing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. Also, it is wrong for us to come with clothing that has adverts on because we will be distracting others. Imagine you are in salah and someone has a, a t-shirt at the back. It is advertising the bargains at spa. So now it says spa, the big bargains, and the man can't wait to finish to get those bargains. So we are disturbing people. We should try not to have writing on our t-shirts and not to have pictures and so on. All that is against the etiquettes of salah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all understanding. Then after we have dressed properly and we are ready to go to the masjid, what happens? Look at the angles from which the Quran has discussed the issue of salah. Allah says there is something known as nida. Nida meaning the adhan that is called out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this in a few places in the Quran. One of them is when it comes to Jumu'ah. Allah says in Surah Al-Jumu'ah, إِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ Referring to the adhan. When the adhan is called out for Jumu'ah, that means there is an adhan for salah mentioned in the Quran. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the fact that the disbelievers will laugh at us whenever we call our adhan and whenever we come for salah. There is a possibility. There are certain categories of disbelievers who will scoff and laugh and make a joke of it.